computer. All right, welcome back to the Thursdays with me. Um, it is September 29th, and we're going to talk about quant again. We're going to do some more word problems. Remember, the deal with word problems is that people are not so hot at separating the task of organizing the information from the task of solving the problem. So just, just keep that in mind as we go. Um, <clears throat> here's the copyright notice again. These problems are from the free GMAT prep, and they are copyright GMAC, unless otherwise noted. Okay. Let's do one. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. Remember, here's where you get the multiple choice answers. Please indicate your answer there and not in the chat box. All right. If you don't have an answer to this, you should probably pick one by this point. Um, what's interesting here is that a whole bunch of people, like there, there's a solid favorite answer that people have here, and it's not the right answer. Like there's, <clears throat> there's an answer that about 50% of people have picked, and it's not the correct answer. So... Um, Remember, as far as time management goes, time management has nothing to do with minutes and seconds. I mean, it should be pretty obvious that a problem like this one is going to take you longer than the average time. I mean, if... I mean, that's the first thing about a problem like this one. I mean, this... The average time that you have for a, a quant problem on this test is about two minutes, but that's the average time. I mean, that, that's that's the time that you calculate if you take the total time that you get and divide it by the number of problems. But this this problem is very clearly longer than average. So, you know, there there are people out there who think that they need to try to solve this problem in two minutes or less, but that would very clearly be a silly thing to think. Because nobody is going to finish this problem in two minutes or less. I mean, look at it, guys. Look at it with your eyes. So, but just remember that, that time management in this exam has nothing, literally nothing whatsoever to do with minutes and seconds. Like, minutes and seconds are completely irrelevant to time management on this exam. Um, time management is just two things. It's just it's just being honest with yourself, which most people are totally not, about whether you're stuck. And then if you're stuck, stop what you're doing. This this is all that time management is. And, you know, if you think about like think about putting together a piece of furniture that you bought from a store like IKEA or one of those other self-assembly furniture stores. I mean, you know, you would either know where the next piece goes or you would not know where the next piece goes. There's no such thing as I kind of know where the next piece goes. Like literally I kind of know is not a thing. Like you either know where it goes or you don't. I kind of know where it goes means you don't know where it goes. And if you don't, you would not randomly start nailing together pieces of wood and hope that you got furniture. Because if you did that, you would definitely ruin the project. And then you would have to start over and cost yourself money and time. So you want, this, you want to take the same approach to this as you would take to assembling furniture. I mean... The reason why everyone's mind is messed up about this is 
that people have been awarded partial credit for all these years, and partial credit have killed your brain here. I mean, just think about that. <clears throat> but to the question in the chat box of how long do we have to answer, there, there's no such thing as how long do we have. I mean, if, if you if you are honest with yourself about these things, then you will not you will not deal with time management issues. You will actually have plenty of time to finish this exam. And time management will only be a problem if you sit there and stare at things or if you do like random work beyond the point where you are genuinely stuck. So just be honest with yourselves. Okay. So This is a word problem. I mean, I don't normally share the answer distributions, but I might as well here. This is basically random, right? I mean, okay, there are like eight of you who didn't answer the question yet. I mean, two of these are me and the other tech student services moderator, but there's eight of you guys who didn't pick an answer yet. I mean, you, you, have, to, you have to pick an answer, guys. You have to pick one. You can't not pick an answer. That's not a thing. So that means you have to guess. The other thing about time management, by the way, is on this exam, like this is going to sound really stupid, but one of the biggest reasons why people don't finish this exam is because they take some amount of time to select a guess once they realize they have to guess. So like also, I mean, if necessary, make a rule for that. Like, what, what I mean by that is, like, some people will literally just freeze up, like, I don't know which choice to pick as a random guess. And I mean, even if that's like 10 seconds, that, that 10 seconds is a hugely big deal because it's not just 10 seconds. It's 10 seconds times however many problems there are that you guess on. And you're going to be guessing on like half these problems, guys. So, you know, think about what 10 seconds times half of all problems are tested. I mean, it's a lot of seconds is the point. So, I mean, if you take... 10, 15, 20 seconds to make a guess on every single time you have to make a guess, I mean, you're going to leave six, seven problems blank because you just won't get to them. I mean, like that adds up. I mean, it's, it's stupid things like that. Like same thing with looking at timers. That's, you know, that's the other thing that people waste a lot of time. But just make sure that you are instantly producing guesses. I mean, your rule could be something like I'm going to take the first choice that's left. Or I'm going to take the last choice that's left. I mean, your rule does not have to be anything complicated. Is the point. I mean, it can be very simple and very short and sweet. But it just you need to spend zero seconds producing guesses. Okay. So if you've seen the earlier sessions on word problems. You'll remember why people have an easier time with word problems in the real world. When people have a word problem type situation in the real world, generally the first thing they do is they whip open their computers. Like, like a typical word problem in the real world would be something like taxes and deductions and stuff. Like if you're working on tax deductions, you would open up your computer and you would use what program? Like, what program would you open up in your computer? You would open up Excel. Yeah, maybe TurboTax, but like probably Excel first. I mean, because you, you wouldn't be able to use TurboTax until you had done all the Excel sheets already. Because you would have to put all the finished numbers into TurboTax. So imagine how you would use Excel. Right? Imagine, like, think about, just think about how you do that. Like, the first thing that you do is, and this is not going to sound crazy or anything like that, I mean, the first thing that you do 
is you make a spreadsheet that's empty. And then you don't fill it in until you've made it. Uh -huh. How about that? I mean, these, these need to be separate steps. Is the point? Like people don't. People have less trouble with word problems in real life because they don't. They don't commingle these steps. So, like, let's think about making an empty spreadsheet for this problem, so to speak. Like, let's just highlight the parts of this problem that you would pay attention to to make a chart or a spreadsheet, spreadsheet, or chart, or table that's empty. Okay. So this year, all right, so when you make charts and tables, the point is that you just have to notice, like, what stuff is in the problem. But you, you don't have to notice mathematical relationships yet because that's not until later. Like, you know, the stuff that goes into the chart you are not noticing yet is the point. So, like, this year there's going to be a save and there's going to be a spend. So, okay. So we know that we can do that. And, I mean, we'll figure out how to organize it in a sec. And next year, there's no income, so that doesn't even go into the chart. We don't even need to worry about that. But for each dollar that he saves this year, so that's already a thing that we notice. Like, saves this year is already a thing. He will have a certain amount available to spend. Notice that we are totally ignoring 1 plus R right now. Like, we don't pay any attention to that because that's not – that's the orange step. Like that's not empty spreadsheet. We don't care yet. So this step, in other words, if, if all we're doing is making a chart or a table, like if the job is just to make a table, we know that we need this year We need save and spend. And then we have next year available to spend. We have that so far. And then we don't care about this variable R yet. What fraction of his income should Henry save? So that's a fraction okay. So that next year the amount he has available, that's already here, will be half the amount that he spends that's already here. So as fractions or maybe as amounts like so these could be fractions and or amounts. All right. Good enough. That's not so bad. I mean, notice, notice how simple that is. I mean, there's really not that much. I mean, this is pretty intimidating looking when you look at it, but there's not that much happening. So, if we just want to do that, all right. Let's let's just let's just do that. Let's just make a table. So this year we have let's say total income, and then save, and then spend. And then there's actually only one column for next year available because that's all there is next year is available. So that's like our entire chart. Uh, 
Okay, and then we we could even make additional columns for fractions. So well, let's just do that. Let's say fraction saved, amount saved. I mean, we we might not need all these columns. But let's make them anyway. All right. How about that? I mean, this is the most that we could possibly need. And I mean, if if we don't need all of these columns, then we don't need all of these columns. But I mean, at least we have them, right? So, and this is for, all of this is for this year. So, th this stuff is all this year. And then this stuff is next year. Next year is really just the available thing. Okay. I mean, the main thing about this, though, is how much we are ignoring when we do this step. I mean, this is... There's two things about it. The first is when you when you do it, you should notice how much you are ignoring. The second is you should notice how natural that is when you like use Excel like a normal person. I mean, you would not when you just normally use Excel, you probably don't even think twice about this. You probably just ignore this stuff and you set up the chart, and then you pay attention to it. Like you only pay attention to it once the chart exists. So now you go back. Like, so give me that smiley face icon if, if you're following me here. Like, this is just what people do. I mean, the smiley face icon, please do not type a smiley in the chat box. Thank you. Um, this, this is what people do, right? We just, we, we make charts, and when we make charts, we are totally not thinking about filling them in yet. Because there's a task of making the chart, there's a task of filling in the chart, and yeah, they're not the same, right? So now we go to this step. Okay. So there's a couple ways that we can do this problem. One way to do it is to just do it algebraically. Um, We can we can define variables for this stuff. What variable do we definitely want to define? Well, the goal of the problem is what fraction of his income should be saved. So we definitely want a variable for that. There's no question about that. So that's the goal. So we can just call that F. Now, one thing about these problems is that you shouldn't define variables that are, that are unnecessary. I mean, Meaning, you could define another variable for total income, but you don't need one. I mean, it, it, it should be clear that this problem is going to work out without a variable for total income, because otherwise you would have to have one. So, like, we can just, we could just say that our total income is one. I mean, we can use total income as I or something like that. I <clears> think <throat> we could. But you can also just use total income as one. I mean, we'll do it both ways just so that you can see it. But if that's the fraction and your total income is 1, see what's nice about this is then what, what's the amount saved?
Maybe we should just do it as I. Tell you what, let's go ahead and just do it with I, and we'll see what happens. So that way it's most general. So if you have a total income of I and you save this fraction of it, then what is the amount saved? Remember, this is a fraction. Yeah, you just multiply it together, right? So this is I times F. And then these fractions would have to add up to 1 because saved and spent is everything. So this would have to be 1 minus F. So this would be I times 1 minus F. So that's I minus I F. Okay. And then for each dollar that he saves this year, he will have one plus R dollars available to spend. So for each dollar saved, there will be one plus R dollars available to spend. So this is times one plus R. And so then we just have this. The amount he has available will be half the amount that he spends this year. So this, um, let's, let's not use fractions. So instead of saying one of those is half the other one, we can just turn it around and say the other one is twice the first one. So like, um, in other words, th this is, here, like the time management stuff. Okay, here. Um, this available is half of is half of this year's spend. That's the same thing as spend this year is twice available next year. So spend this year is that. Available next year is that. So I minus FI equals 2FI plus times 1 plus R. What are we solving for? We're solving for F. So if we do that, just make sure you collect the Fs on both sides. So I minus Fi equals 2Fi plus 2FiR. So F is on every, um, just I is by itself over there. So I is 3FI plus 2FIR. So I is factor F out of that. So that's 3I plus 2IR. Notice I cancels out, so you don't need the I, right? So 1 is F times 3 plus 2R. And that gives you choice E. So that's F. F is 1 over 3 plus 2R. So notice what you have here, right? I mean, the point, this, this problem is still obviously a very challenging problem. And if you, honestly, if you set a goal of doing this problem in literally two minutes, then I'm going to just go ahead and say you're not going to be able to do it. But setting a goal of doing a problem like this in the average time is just not smart because this problem is clearly not average. So, but notice that if you just, if you separate these tasks, 
then you're fine. I mean, you just have to, you just have to, and then that's a totally normal instinct that you have from like using Excel. You know, you just have to, okay, I'm going to make a chart and totally not pay any attention to arithmetic or algebra at all. Like all I'm paying attention to is headings. And then I do all this algebra stuff. And if you do that, it's really not that bad, right? I mean, if you, it, it's, there's still a lot of things happening, but at no point is this really overwhelming. I mean, you're just, you're just pulling all the stuff out of here. And you're either paying attention to the purple stuff or you're paying attention to the orange stuff, but you are never paying attention to both of those things at the same time. That's the point. Um, give me a smiley face if this makes sense. Notice also at, at no point do you have to remember anything while you are doing anything else either. Like like that's that's the other major thing. I mean I'm gonna this is what I call in my classes that I teach, this is what I call my first rule of organization. If you ever have to remember anything while doing anything else, you're not writing enough stuff down. I mean, this is, like, for me, this is really easy because I have a very bad memory. Like, my memory is actually in the bottom percentile of humans. I mean, there, there are reasons for that. I actually had an accident as a kid that caused some brain damage and stuff. But, like, basically my brain doesn't hold more than one thing at a time. So, like, I personally cannot. I, I can't. I can't remember things while I do other things. So for me, it's very natural to literally write down everything all the time because I know that I can't hold stuff in my memory. But, like, yeah, I mean, it's ironic that a lack of memory would be a great asset, but it, ironically it is. So, but there are people who take this test who have that kind of good memory and it winds up being a problem for them because they wind up trying to hold all this stuff in their brain at the same time. And like even, I mean, obviously they're going to make a lot more mistakes if they do that. But even if they can do that, it's going to be really slow. So just, just remember you should never have to keep simultaneously, you could never have to keep a piece of information in your head while you manipulate another piece of information. You should just, you should never have to do that. And this is, this is absolutely an absolute. So just, if you have to do that, you're not writing enough stuff down. Period. End of story. And I mean, the, unlike other things, this should be very easy to be aware of. This is not like a ton of introspection. I mean, you should notice if you have to keep information in your head while you're using other information. If you notice that you have to do that, you need to write more stuff down, guys. That's pretty much what there is to it. So, okay. Um, you can also do this problem without algebra. Um, here's the problem again. And here is our organizational device. Um, how can you do this problem without algebra? Yeah, you can pick you can pick so called smart numbers, sure, right? Um there's a couple of clues here that tell you that you can do that, by the way. There's the variables in all the choices, and then there's the word in terms of. Like, if you see the phrase in terms of, actually, that, that, that's, that's an infallible clue that you can do this. Um, because in terms of means that you don't find out what that variable is. So... If you see either of these things, if you see in terms of 
or if you see variables in the choices. then you can pick what we call smart numbers, with, which means your own values for the numbers. So let's do it. Um, so we can pick R. The point is to just pick a number that makes all of these different. So if we pick R to just be, we might think about picking R as 1 because that's an easy number, but R is 1 is a bad idea because if R is 1, then this is 4, and this is also 4, and then this is 5, and this is also 5. But if we pick R as 2, then all five choices are different, right? Like that's going to be that that's one over four, that's one over six, that's one over eight, that's one over five, that's one over seven. So one over four, one over six, one over eight, one over five, one over seven. Okay. So let's take our let's take our two. <coughs> Excuse me, R is 2. And then we can also pick a smart number for the total income. And so notice we pick R as 2 for that. So for every dollar saved this year, Henry, Henry will have $3 available next year. And then his income this year can just be what do you want his income to be this year? Let's say it's ten. Okay. We can do we can do ten. So, sure. Okay. So it, it, there's actually two ways that we can do this. Um, we can do it with, we can still solve for an algebraic variable called f. Or we can do it with what's called back solving. We can, we can show both of those here in a sec. But this is for every dollar saved this year, he'll have three dollars available so we can pick that's that's times three. Okay. Well the poor guy, I mean he's he's getting two hundred percent interest somehow. I mean I I wish I could get two hundred percent interest. So he's not that poor. Um, okay. So total of ten Let's say that we have an uh, algebraic variable called f. So then the amount saved, I mean, here the problem is the amount saved is still 10f, which is still kind of meaningless, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal. And then, <clears throat> so that would be 30f. And then remember that we still have the, uh, the, the, the spend is two times available next year. Okay. So the fraction spent would still be 1 minus F, and so this would still be 10 times 1 minus F, which is 10 minus 10F. 10 so 10 minus 10F equals 2 times 30F. So 10 minus 10F equals 60F. So 10 equals 70F. So 1 7th is F. 
So notice what it does when you pick the smart number here, it helps you. I mean, this is, this is choice E. It definitely helps you. I mean, this, this arithmetic is much easier. So there's also that solution. You need a smiley face if that makes sense. And I mean, last but not least, what, what you can also do is once you've chosen R as 2, if you don't like the algebraic variable F, um, what you can do once you've done that is you can even remember that this fraction, uh, the amount spent is supposed to be twice, so this is supposed to be times two. You, you can also back solve. Right, you can also use the answer choices. You can also start from the choices. So, so like if we try A, for instance, which is a four, so that would be a quarter saved, which would mean three quarters spent. That would mean you would save seven fifty, two fifty times three is seven fifty available, and then times two is fifteen. Well, I mean, 15 is not 3 fourths of 10, so that doesn't work. And we got to go to a smaller fraction. All these problems are from the GMAT prep software, the free, the free GMAT prep. Okay, if we try, you get the point, you try the choices. I mean, the ones that are wrong will not work. Eventually, you'll get to try an E. If we say, I don't want to try a seventh of ten, so instead of trying ten, you can just adjust this so that it is nicer with one seven. So you can do that too. So that means you would save ten and you would spend sixty. So ten times three would be thirty. Uh, just say thirty. And then 30 times 2 is actually 60, so all of these numbers actually work out. So you can do that, too. So there's like a thousand million ways that you can do this problem, but notice that all of them depend on the idea of this. They all depend on the idea of first making this empty chart. And like what, what's, what's nicest about this is that you don't even have to decide how you're going to do the problem until you are done making the chart. Like you, you make the whole organizational device and you fill it in and then you decide the strategy. Like you don't even decide how you're going to solve the problem until you've done all of these things. You, you don't even decide. You don't, have to, <coughs> you don't have to decide on a strategy until after these things. That's what's so nice about this, right? You make the whole Excel sheet. And I mean, you know this about Excel too, right? If you're doing your tax stuff, I mean, you make all of those tax spreadsheets and you, you punch in all the numbers and stuff before you start manipulating anything. You know, if you're going to start reallocating things like investments or if you're going to start moving stuff around so that you get bigger deductions, you don't start doing any of that until your spreadsheets are all made. This is exactly the same thing. Like you don't start doing stuff with problem solving until all of your organizational devices exist. This is exactly the same thing. So there you go. Any questions about any of it? We saw this problem in like at least three different ways to solve it. So Last but not least, remember when you review these problems, you should be, the goal of reviewing these problems is to solve them in as many ways as humanly possible. So if, if, if algebra is your biggest strength and you, and you solved it this way the first time, 
the biggest emphasis of your review should be this type of stuff. Should be the non-algebraic solutions because that's how you will actually get better at this exam. Is to emphasize the solutions that you are not currently using. So I mean, if you emphasize things that are your own strengths right now, then I mean, I, I should have to tell you this, but that's not going to make you better at anything. So, okay. Let's do another problem. Let's do one. Okay, how about, let's see. <laughs> okay, how about this one? I mean, these things have a lot of words. The other thing to notice about these problems is they are not being deliberately obtuse. Like they're not, they're not using a lot of words to be annoying. I mean, they're using a lot of words because they have to. So if any of you guys are under the impression that they use lots of words to add a challenge or that they're being wordy on purpose, make sure that you do not think that because that is definitely false. Like they, they, they are, the problems are wordy because when you put mathematical relationships in words, and in general when you put anything precise in words, it tends to be wordy. That's just how stuff is. So just keep that in mind. Um, try this problem. Don't forget where the multiple choice answers are found. Okay. <clears throat> If you don't have something for this, you should have something pretty serious. Remember what time management is and isn't. I mean, time management is basically like admitting when you're stuck and picking something and moving on. So please pick one of the multiple choice options, guys. <laughs> so we still have about we still have like six or seven people who haven't answered it yet. You gotta pick something through here. So we're gonna move on in a sec, but remember this is a test that does not let you leave things blank and does not let you not answer things and does not let you come back to them. So you have to answer the questions. Guys. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, anyways, let's talk about it. Remember the thing with word problems, again, is that this is what seems like an overwhelming amount of information, but it's, it's, it's only overwhelming if you don't, if you don't split up the, the task of organizing it from the task of solving it. So, I mean, if, if we're going we're gonna to use as few words as possible to summarize this, just separate the, the tasks of organizing and solving. I mean, ultimately, that's what this is, right? So, because that's what, and again, this is what people naturally do when they use things like Excel. Like, people don't even think twice about this. I mean, you you have an empty Excel sheet. The first thing you do is you make a bunch of rows and columns, and you make a bunch of rows and columns that are empty, and you don't fill them in until they exist. 
that's pretty much what it is. I mean, you may make adjustments later, sure. Like, you might add a column if it turns out that you need one and it's not there. I mean, that, that's always a thing. Just like we might add columns or rows to our organizational devices, too. But, but for the most part, when you, you know, when you use Excel, you just you just do it. You just make the you just make the chart for or a table. So let's talk about organizing it. And again, when you organize it, you want to only pay attention to those things that that actually have to do with headings. And let's and you want to ignore everything else, right? So. So you have a total take home pay. So what let's just take an inventory basically, right? It's it's kind of like you can think of it as an inventory of what goes inventory of what's in the problem. So we have a total take home pay. And then she saved the same fraction each month. So it's monthly. So, so far it's just monthly. And then there's a fraction saved. So presumably if there's a fraction saved, we can probably anticipate that there's going to be an amount saved as well. And there is, right? So there's a total amount of money that she had saved yearly. So that's going to be times 12, right? That's a big deal, but that's also going to be yearly. And then blah, 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 three times we don't care about because that's, that's later. That's part of the solving stuff. So, and in fact, there's three different pieces of, of there's three different tasks, not just two. There's organizing, there's filling in information, and then there's solving. So there's not really just two, there's not really just two tasks. There's actually three. So we have the amount that she didn't save. So we're, yeah, this is kind of like the last problem if you think about it. We're, we're just dividing up take home pay into a saved amount and a not saved amount, which is really just the rest of it. So this is the, this is the fraction not saved which is the, the rest of it. And there's going to be an amount not saved. Okay. And then if all the money she saved last year, so we already have that, that's not a new thing. And then what fraction of her take home pay did she save? That's not a new thing either. So all of this stuff is here. So if we organize it, then this is actually not so bad. I mean, we, we have total, we have total, total pay. And then we just have, we have saved um, fraction um, per month. We have amount per month, and then we also have amount per year. And then we have the same quantities for, we have the same quantities for um, spend, for the amount that she doesn't say. So, 
and that's all we have, right? It's it's basically. I mean, again, we might not need all of these columns, but if we have columns that we don't use, that's fine. It's it's better to have redundant or superfluous columns than it is to um, we um, what I don't understand the question because it's S over T. I, I don't know what that means. I mean, we 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 clearly do not want to ignore the fraction save because that's the goal of the entire problem. I I, I think I'm misunderstanding what you're asking. I mean, if if your question is whether we can ignore that, the answer is clearly no. We cannot ignore that because that is the goal of the whole problem. So we we definitely should not ignore that. But maybe you're asking something else. I think you're probably asking something else. But okay. Um, anyway, in, in general, we don't want to worry about that. Like worrying about whether we can eliminate columns is a bad thing to do anyway because it's like I was saying, like having redundant columns or having superfluous columns is totally fine right now. Like you don't, it, it's, it's a very bad thing to even be thinking about that right now because that's going to just waste your time. I mean, it's, you want to just write down everything you can write down and then if it turns out that you just leave a column blank, then you just leave it blank. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's, it's it's much worse to need a column that you don't have than it is to, I mean, if it turns out that you don't use a column, there's no big deal there. But if you, if you, um, the same way, just different angles not I don't really understand what you mean um, I, I mean the, the goal of the problem is the fraction save I mean if you try to ignore the fraction save you will be unable to solve the problem so it, it anyway um, so let, let's let's talk about this problem this is the goal we should as long as it's on your chart somewhere for sure, right? Like as long as your as long as your chart says that you should divide those things, then then as long as you're not making yourself remember that you should divide those things. Because then you're then you have the same problem that we talked about before with trying to remember stuff while you do other stuff, which you might get away with that, but you might not. So but I mean that works too. As long as you as long as you indicate somewhere on your chart that you have to do it. And don't make yourself remember. Okay. So we have this. Let's talk about it. Um, all right. So we one way we can do is problems algebraically, right? We can do it. If you have a total pay of let's say the total pay per month is, let's say it's M, and then the thing that you get, and then the fraction per month is F. So then the amount saved per month would be F times M, and then per year is just 12 times that much. Okay, now we got to use the stuff that's information in the problem. So let's do it. Let's do it. Three times the saved amount total for the year is three times the monthly not saved. So if we multiply this 
by three. So if we go if we go against the direction of that arrow, we would divide by three. So um, Ilya, I don't know where those X's and Y's are coming from, but the answer choice that you have selected is not the correct answer. So the answer is probably no. Um, okay. This is 4FM. Okay, and then the, the the amount that you don't save, if this is, if this, if this fraction is saved per month, then this fraction per month is 1 minus F, right? So that's going to be 1 minus F. And so then that's going to be 1 minus F times M. Uh, those are equal, so that should let you solve. Ah, okay, we can solve that. Okay. So the F's cancel. Um, the M, sorry, the M's are gone. So 4FM equals 1 minus F times M. That means that 4F is 1 minus F. So 5F is 1. And F is a fifth. So that's choice D like dog. You can do that. All right. Um, that's one way of doing it. We can also, how, how else can you do this problem without doing any algebra? Yeah, you can back solve. Let's do that. Um, we can pick numbers that these all go into. We, so the smallest number that three, four, five, that two, three, four, five, and six all go into is um, here. Let me move this out of here. Okay. The, the smallest number that all of these go into is going to be six. These. So we can pick a total pay per month of six. These. So we can do that. Well, so that that that's just going to be checking that. I mean, the, the three times the amount you don't you don't pick numbers that do that. That that's going to be the thing that you check against other information. So if you yeah, that, that's going to be the the thing that you solve. So we could try to. I mean, we can pick sixty for the total pay per month. And then let's just try to back solve. So M is 100. That's probably not such a great idea because we have things like 1 third and 1 sixth. I mean, 1 third and 1 sixth of 100 are not great things. So I mean, if you, if you just do the 1 half and 4th and 5th, you get lucky with that. But it's better to pick a number that would work with those things. So if we tried, um, let's say we tried C, um, that's one fourth. So that's going to be one fourth and three fourths. So that means you save 15 in a month. And 15 times 12 is 180. Okay, so the point is you have two ways of getting this number, right? One way is that it's supposed to be a third of whatever's here. So this would have to be 60. But then also it, it would have to be three-fourths of the original thing. And so it would also have to be 45 at the same time. And so that doesn't work. So that doesn't work. 
So it's not, it's not, it's not C. And if we try choice D, and I mean, notice with back solving, it might take you a bit to figure out how to try the choice the first time, but once you figure out how to run it through for one answer choice, then trying the rest of the answer choices will be really fast. I mean, it, it will probably take you longer to try the first answer choice than it will than it will take you to try all the other ones combined, even if you have to try them all. So if we if you use 60 again for D, so that's one fifth. Um, that's 12 per month. So 12 times 12 is 144. Again, there's there's two ways. This would be four fifth. There's two ways to arrive at this number. The first way to arrive at this number is it's supposed to be one third of that number. So one third of 150 is 50. So one third of 144 is 48. And then the other way to arrive at this number would be that it's supposed to be 4 fifths of 60. And that, that's also a thing. 4 fifths of 60 is 48. So that works. And there you have it. I mean, you could also do a sort of hybrid approach of this where you would pick some sort of number here, and you could still have a variable to the fraction. I mean, you could still you could still do that. I mean, you could still have like um, let's do that without erasing anything. I mean, you you could also still have a sixty over here. Um, if this was f, then this would be one minus f, and then this would still be 60f, and this would be, I guess, 720f. So divide that by 3. That's 240f. And then if you do it the other way, it's 60 times 1 minus half. So that would also work. And if you solve that, that should also give you a fifth for f. So there's like a bunch of ways you can do it. Um, so you can do it with a smart number and still algebra for f. You can do it with smart number and back solving. You can do it with a totally algebraic approach as we did it the first time. You can do this a whole bunch of ways. But the point is that no matter how you do it, and I mean, your setup might not be the same as, as Lynn says. She she set it up differently. She set it up so that she had this fraction instead of having it the way we have it here. She had the fraction at the end of her approach by dividing the saved amount by the total, and that can also work. So that that's also a thing. Like you, in other words, you might not you might not organize the problem the same way that someone else organizes the problem. Like I have the fraction up front, Lynn has the fraction at the end of her approach, but she got the correct answer and we also have the correct answer here. So that's that's the both ways are valid. You just want to make sure that you you do want to make sure the goal appears in your work somewhere. Like if you if you're making yourself remember to divide two things at the end, that's bad. You should just make another column that says like divide these two things. As long as you're doing that, perfect. Then you then you can organize it however you want, as long as all of the important things are actually there. So absolutely. Um, cool. And we are right on time. Cool. 
Thank you. We've got a few more of these. We might do um, some more of them for the next session. We might do something else. We'll have to see. But thank you for attending. I do think the next one, I think the next one of these is in two weeks. But please check the, please check the website for that. And um, thank you. I'm going to turn off the recording at this point. Good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, good luck.